Okay, so one of the questions you could get asked typically on the AC section of electricity is how can you use an oscilloscope to measure RMS voltage of a supply? So let's quickly sketch what an AC voltage is going to look like. So you should see something appear on your oscilloscope that looks something like this. And what we were looking to do in this question is obviously calculate the RMS voltage. So how do you go about calculating RMS voltage? Well, the key thing is VRMS equal to V peak divided by root 2. Now, so, so if you want to calculate RMS, you need to find out what a V peak is. But looking at the waveform on the right hand side, like you would get from a oscilloscope, it's not immediately obvious what V peak is because you could have a like a go at guessing where routes the center line was and get an approximate value of V peak. But when a question like this wouldn't be after like an approximate value, it would be looking for you to get, find out like you know what the exact value is. So what you have to do is on your oscilloscope you measure the peak to peak value. So that's the distance between the top of the peak to the bottom of the trough. And what you'll find, peak to peak, is equal to 2 times V peak. Okay, so what we've got currently is that you can measure the peak to peak value from your waveform and use that to calculate V peak, which you can then use to calculate V RMS. However, obviously on an oscilloscope, it doesn't have like, a scale all the way up to like 400 or whatever volts you're going to be using. It will have a scale in centimeters, so like the waveform might be 5 centimeters high. So let's just say, for example, you measured it and you found V peak to peak was, I, I don't know, 5 centimeters. Okay, so what an oscilloscope has is something called gain, and you can set these on a series that you can change it to different levels, but what from that what you can work out or set is the volts per centimeter, for instance. So a typical one might be 20 volts per centimeter, it could be lower, it could be greater, but sometimes you might see it written differently, so you might see it in volts per division, because on oscilloscope what you'll see on the screen is there are a series of squares, and each one of those squares is a division, so like a typical one might be 20 volts per division. So to convert the V peak to what we measure on an oscilloscope to the actual, you obviously take the 5 centimeters, multiply by the gain, so we're going to use the one we used in the example, so 20 volts, volts per centimetre, and that would give you a V peak to peak equal to 100 volts. And then obviously you could use that to work out what the V peak is, because that would have to be that divided by 2, which would give you the V peak of 50 volts. Then that divided by root 2 would tell you what the RMS is of that particular AC waveform. Okay. Okay, so this next part asks, well, how could you use an oscilloscope to measure the frequency of your waveform? So again, let's sketch our waveform. Okay, so obviously frequency is the number of cycles per second. And from this waveform, we're going to need to find out what the wavelength is and then use that to calculate what the frequency is. So if we look along here, so what we're interestingly interested in is this wavelength here. Now in an oscilloscope you have two axes on there, so you have your voltage scale along there and you'll have your time scale along that way. So instead of like giving your wavelength in meters on an oscilloscope, it gives you the wavelength in seconds. 
So what you can do is you can work out the number of seconds or milliseconds it takes for one waveform, and then you can, by taking the reciprocal of that, you can work out the number of them you would get every second, okay? So the first thing to do is get your waveform up on screen like this, and you'd measure, measure, I'm going to go here. In seconds, or well, more likely, it would be in milliseconds. Okay, so you measure the distance from the same point on the waveform. So you you could measure like it is in the diagram, or you could measure across between the peaks. Is a very it's probably the, one of the most accurate ways. And obviously, the screen troughs if we drawn another trough in there. Okay, so you measure that time. And that tells you the time for one for one cycle. So what you'll have is a, you'll have a difference in centimeters. So let's say you measure it to three centimeters in this case, or three divisions depending on what kind of oscilloscope you're using. And just like with the voltage scale, there's a, a gain applied to the time scale. So in this sense in this instance the gain here would be in uh, like seconds per centimeter or seconds per division. And a typical one might be ten milliseconds per division. Okay, four centimeters. So let's use that in this case. So with like ten milliseconds per division. So obviously one cycle would take thirty milliseconds. Just move this up here so we can continue. Right, so if you've got one cycle takes 30 milliseconds, to find out the number of cycles per second, which is the frequency, you would do There's one sense of time per cycle, so we one divided by thirty times ten, which is then minus three because it's in milliseconds here, so you want to convert it to seconds, and that will give you an answer of around about thirty three hertz. So it's a slightly lower frequency than you'd normally expect for mains electricity, which tends to be at fifty hertz in the UK or 60 if you hop across to America, or even 400 if you hop yourself onto an aeroplane.